So we have to be able to look inside them to see what is it that's really going on in there. The blood is our indicator for that. When we see patterns, changes, and uh, groupings of information from the blood work, it may give us an indication of something that's occurring metabolically within the animal. But then when you tie that with knowing what's changed from the production or the health or the uh, um, genetics even of the animal, then we can start to evaluate what the assessment is. How biomarkers and machine learning act as an early warning system in poultry production. This is the topic of today's Future Feed Talks. I am Fabien Brokter, Editor-in-Chief of Poultry World, and this series is in cooperation with DSM Vermelig Animal Nutrition and Health. Today, I will be talking to Scott Cavey, Senior Director, Precision Nutrition and Health at DSM Vermelig. Scott is closely involved in the Verax project, a setup for on-farm blood tests, which are analyzed and then compared with huge data sets using machine learning. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, Scott. Thank you. Thanks nice. for, your, for your time of being here. Um, you're uh, involved in the Verax uh, project. Uh, can you uh, explain the basics of, of, the, of the, that project? Yeah, so Verax is a way that DSM is evolving into our precision nutrition and health business. And it's really based around data analytics and deep data analytics through machine learning, AI, and lar large language models. And what is the main driver or was the main driver behind, behind the development of, of Verax? Because it's a, a quite an intricate uh, project as I understood. Yeah, the, the main driver is, as, as a company, DSM has been really more product focused. And as the industry and, and animal agriculture has, involved, has evolved, there's more need to really understand what's going on inside the animal. And we've done a nice job over the years of, of uh, really managing to the expectations of what we can see, hear, and smell in an animal environment. Um, but we kind of reached that level that, that more production is going to come by us, really understanding what our data is telling us more completely and being able to get inside the animal to really understand what's going on yeah. before it becomes visually um, apparent. Exactly, because we're all more or less experts of, of watching a chicken and, and exactly. having an idea of how he's performing. But, yep. but, but there's more to it. There's, there's a lot more to it, and there's a lot more that happens at earlier ages that manifest themselves into problems that we just can't see. Uh, there's indications that uh, changes are happening within animals that are happening internal, under the feathers, under the skin, et cetera, that we don't see sometimes until it's too late, but most of the time until a drastic measure has to happen. And with the pressure on you know, reducing antibiotics, et cetera, we've got to understand what's going on in the animal. Uh, we've got to feed the gut first, and, and we have to know a lot more about what's happening. The lifeblood of the animal is their blood, so that's the first place we started really looking at what the animal can tell us. And, and you, you just mentioned that, that there's a lot of technical technology involved, like uh, AI uh, analysis uh, results. In, in your opinion, what's the uptake of new technology in general in, in our industry? I think there's an enormous amount of curiosity about it. Uh, the obstacle is that we're having to educate people about what it is and what it means. I think what's happened over the past 10 to 20 years is we had a big boom of big data. Mm -hmm. And I gave a presentation probably a decade ago that big data is not a lot of data. It's not just having data about everything. It's being able to know what it tells you and being able to analyze what the actual information and the takeaways from that data are. And I think today we're starting to get to that, the point where we can really use machine learning, uh, advanced AI, and especially now with large language models, we can start to really assimilate that data together more easily to be able to tell you what it tells you without spending you know, six months analyzing data on mm -hmm. a 45-day chicken cycle. Yeah, yeah. Not, doesn't not make sense. Not farm or, or company is a, is a data analysis. Exactly. Uh, um, s starting with, 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 with Ferrax and with the, with the, the process of Ferrax, there, there's the blood analysis. 
Uh, how, how does it work on farm? So blood analysis is really a fairly simple process of taking a wing stick on a, on a bird and then running that analysis. We use three separate machines that are all point of care devices. So we can analyze it right there on the, uh, on the farm or in a collection site on, uh, uh, in a complex. And we can run through the analysis very quickly. That analysis then is loaded into the servers where we then look at the full view of not just the blood analytics, but then the formulation and the, and the uh, production data, weather data, geographic data. Uh, we're matching all of that together to come to the scenarios and the assessments of really what's going on inside the bird. And, and would you tie in the veterinarian, the local veterinarian as well? In, 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 For in health records, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're pulling in health and, and feed and management and as, as much data as we have to be able to tie it all together, the more impactful and beneficial the information mm -hmm. is for the customer. Yeah. And what, what can the, uh, the customer actually get out of the blood work and the subsequent uh, analysis and, 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 and comparison to, to other data sets? Yeah, so the, best, the biggest thing we're seeing is the blood is really just telling us what's inside the bird. You know, when we go to the doctor, we tell them, ah, it hurts right here, I'm feeling this. You know, birds don't do that. So we have to be able to look inside them to see what is it that's really going on in there. The blood is our indicator for that. When we see patterns, changes, and uh, groupings of information from the blood work, it may give us an indication of something that's occurring metabolically within the animal. But then when you tie that with knowing what's changed from the production or the health or the uh, um, genetics even of the animal, then we can start to evaluate what the assessment is. Now, one other part of our system is that we capture and curate thousands and thousands of uh, peer-reviewed literature that is open to the public, but we're able then to use uh, machine learning and uh, expert systems to match what we're seeing in the data to the research that's been done. So not only can we tell you this is what we see, but here's what's been researched in that area, and this is what research has found, so here are some possible solutions or or takeaways for you. Yeah, so you have an actual more or less library of, of research papers which are tied into, uh, into, into the project as well. Yep, exactly. Uh, and then how does that, that benefit uh, the, uh, the customer? I think the biggest thing for the customer is a lot of customers have a lot of data. They don't really know what the data tells them. So we're able to aggregate that information together with them and again, give them, give them a view inside the bird. What, what is happening within the bird? Uh, we have a, a number of examples of a, a situation that you know, a, a customer just can't figure out. They can't figure out why the birds are, are uh, um, having a certain situation. An example just recently of vent gleat was an, ex was an issue that the customer was, was struggling with. And obviously that creates higher mortality. After tying together formula information as well as uh, um, the blood analytics, you know, the, the birds were really major acidosis, and they had been increasing calcium levels, addressing bone strength and eggshell quality, but there wasn't a way to really monitor the cause and effects. And I think with this kind of a system, if you're doing just passive surveillance on a regular basis, once a season, we'll see those modifications of what's happening internally within the birds. And as you match that up with changes that you're doing in your formulas, you can start to see when you push the boundaries of, of what's probably going to cause another effect. And I think that's the real value in this system is not just a single diagnosis mm -hmm. but that constant evaluation so as you change things move and try things amino acids calcium phosphorus mm -hmm. etc you can see how it's affecting the bird in other ways and address those start points and just get a little more precise in mm -hmm. our nutrition and so it's quite important not only to 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 measure your results against other farms but also have a regular follow-up on your own farm exactly. to compare uh, the flock uh, over a longer time. Yep. With the large data set that we have, we have very good um, baselines, let's mm -hmm. say, for what the industry is of in-field applications. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been a lot of research that's been done that says this is where the birds are, but in that kind of an environment, you get a little sterile uh, growing conditions, not with the pressure that you see mm -hmm. in a commercial operation. All of our data is coming out of commercial operations. So we're able to see norms and acceptable ranges for normal commercial operations, which I think is more indicative when you get into comparing in that environment. 
And when you circle back to a customer with, with the results, uh, how are they presented? Is, it, is, it, is there an explanation going with it or is it a sort of a dashboard? Can you explain that? Oh, there's actually two different ways. So immediate feedback is on an internet-based dashboard that we show you the models that we have created and how we've set those, those models up. So you get general kind of ongoing comparative scores within your operation. We also show you the, uh, 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 the levels of your individual biomarkers to acceptable ranges. So if you want to pick at it yourself, we have a custom plotting application where if you're just curious about what's the relationship between this nutrient and this nutrient over time with multiple samplings, you can do that as well. But then twice a year, we go back with the customer after doing our own internal scientific analysis and bring all of the data together for them in a personal presentation to show them we've already gone through these models on the internet, but here's some other information that, uh, that we're seeing from your data. Yeah, because as you said before, big data can be a lot of data and it's, it can be hard to, to look into it. Uh, and it's constantly it's evolving. You know, mm -hmm. you're constantly adding to it. So you've got to be able to see how it's changing, how it's modifying. And, and the models that we put together are, you know, highly accurate and I think, you know, well-meaning in the value to the customer to do a quick look. But we develop the models based on all the new data that we have. So even before we'll get a model created for it, we'll see the tendencies in the data and the sit down discussion with the customer. Every time when we share, you know, we're seeing these levels of sodium or we're seeing these levels of chloride and they're elevated to such a level in comparison with phosphorus or, or uh, calcium levels, your amino acid, they'll always, a light bulb goes on. Ah, I just did this mm. and there you go. That's, that's what's happening. And the VAERS project is, is running for quite some time now. I think it's about one and a half year. Well, we started the, the work, the original research, about four and a half years ago. All oh, right. And then we did our own research trials to build these models. We teamed up with a company called Inside Tracker, who does this on the human side, who has worked in developing the, the system for us from a, um, a computer and web-based system mm -hmm. and a data capture on, uh, on an iPad. And then the, uh, the science application, the real development development of the science and the uh, the launch of the system in the broader market has been about a year and a half. And what kind of successes are you seeing using the, the technique as a diagnostic tool? I think, I think the success has been very strong from the customer response standpoint. Uh, we're, we're still rolling out into Europe, uh, uh, Asia, uh, even Latin America, we're just starting with the, with uh, new customers there. I would say in North America, especially, uh, there's a very good foothold with uh, customers on how this application really assists them in understanding more deeply what's going on in their operation. And and, and to round it all up, uh, how uh, could a producer really benefit from using uh, this tool on a regular basis? Yeah, I think the benefits are, are really in Number one, them getting a deeper understanding of what's going on inside the bird. But, but secondly, you know, we work on a lot of diagnosis. You know, I have this problem and I want to see. We've had different examples where, you know, they'll work for months and months trying to figure it out. We might not have the answer, but we'll come in with a couple different scenarios of what could be caused, which lets them narrow down their focus into, all right, we're gonna look at this ingredient combination or look at a, an ingredient that, uh, that may be causing the problem, uh, reformulate something on it, uh, or in a health scenario, um, you know, whether your, your uh, gut uh, and, and uh, system is, is alkalemic or, or acidotic or where you stand from a gut uh, um, balance standpoint. The, the real benefit long term, though, is that constant monitoring so that you can start tweaking formulas. You can start trying different programs from a health standpoint. You can, you know, ebb and flow through different health challenges and really be able to monitor what's going on inside the bird. Where, where that bird and how that bird is reacting internally through their blood metrics. And that constant evaluation, I think, is where, where the industry needs to go in being able to really fine tune our, uh, um, our genetics, uh, or fine tune our nutrition. Our genetics, uh, interestingly, we're seeing different patterns in different genetic uh, uh, profiles. We're seeing different patterns in different seasonal profiles. Mm -hmm. So we, we may need diets specific to one genetic or another and, and diets that are specific to seasons. So getting closer to the 
the actual needs of the birds to, uh, to uh, uh, improve performance. Exactly. Well, that uh, sounds really good, uh, Scott. Thank you for your, your, your insights. You bet. Thank you. Yeah. Great having you here. Thanks. Thank you for watching Future Feed Talks. Do you want to see more episodes or listen to our podcast? Please click on the link below.